The ancient mysteries of consciousness are becoming more and more urgent societal questions. Uh, we're making more sophisticated AIs, we're growing brain organoids that are bigger and bigger and starting to do more and more complex computations. And uh, in this book, Feeling of Life Itself, um, which is about IIT, you have a graph that might help us think about this. Before we see where AI and organoids would go on this graph, can you just explain what's going on in that main diagonal and the difference between consciousness and intelligence? You, you can insert this yeah. image, right? Yeah, so on the on the x-axis, we have some measure of intelligence. So think of it something like an IQ. Right? We don't have this across animals, but, you know, we, we, we all have this intuition, and that's all I, right now we have, that a, um, a sea animal, you know, um, Medusa, doesn't have a lot of intelligence, but it has some, otherwise it wouldn't survive, certainly less than a bee, which is a very complicated creature already, and can do you know all sorts of things, like uh, can recognize individual owners, can do a waggle tans, dance, no, can uh, communicate to others where the source of bees is, that has more than a mouse, more than a Bernese mountain dog, which has a lot, let me tell you, Bernese mountain dogs. And then here, you know, is um, a humans. Right? And then now here, separately applaud consciousness, because as I said, intelligence is ultimately about doing. It's about behavior, the variety of, of um, time scales. You know, it could be as quickly as avoiding the car that's heading for me. It could be medium term, okay, I have to start planning what I'm going to do this weekend. Or it could be long term, you know, I better invest my education or get a PhD and suffer for five years because in the end it's good for me, for my career. Right? Those are all um, instances of intelligence. That's very different than from um, from consciousness this is about feeling in fact you can certainly imagine that all, that nothing in intelligence requires consciousness right you can certainly imagine you know the the classical zombie argument in in philosophy that you you have you you have everything humans can do you have everything humans have except it doesn't feel like anything there's no light inside of you there's just nothing now here so in consciousness you know, as I mentioned uh, in my view it's about being this is about doing so you can uh, plot them separately Given evolution, the core evolution of complex neural network, I think we until now we've been in a world where the more intelligent species are, the more consciousness they have. In other words, the more capacity to discriminate complicated stimuli, to have more richer awareness, and even individuals change throughout their lifetime. You know, you're born, you have very little consciousness. You may just be, you know, conscious of some simple sounds. You look for the warmth of your mother's breast and breast milk. As you get older, let's say pre-puberty, you don't know anything about sex and romantic, you know, the other the, the other sex and, and romantic, uh, you know, the, then you learn that when you, you know, when you become into puberty or 16, 18, you discover sex, drugs and rock and roll. You discover art, you know, the constantly enlarges the, the repertoire of conscious um, experiences, and so it is across here. But now we have human ingenuity that creates things like brain organoids, right? So brain organoids, what they are, right? So I can take cells from, let's say, my under, from my skin under my arm, and I can um, use some, fa some biological factors, some transcription factors, four of them, in fact, and I can turn them into inducible pluripotent human stem cell and then turn them now into any organ, such as a little brain. They're also called sometimes brain in a dish, mini, mini organoid or cerebral organoid. So, and then I develop them just like you need to develop in the belly of your mom. They, they, they put these into um, an incubator and wait four months, six months, eight months, etc. And then you can get these little assemblies of cells. They, are, they have some wiring, they have electrical activity. Typically, they are like half a centimeter, you know, five millimeter big. Here, I've got one. If you could put that wherever you think it might go on the graph. Oh. There's a little organoid there. Wow. Okay. Well, let's put them here. Okay. So why do I put them here? Well, so current or cerebral organoids don't have an input. Let's say they don't have eyes. People are trying to do that. They're trying to put cameras there or even grow uh, grow retinal organoids, and they don't have output so far, although, again, people are trying to give them motor output, but right now, not. So clearly, by any measure, they're not intelligent. They can't act in the world. They can't do anything. They can't plan. Now, IET would say, in principle, if they really mimic a little bit of the human cerebral cortex, in principle at least, you know, you really have to look at the, the details, the wiring, it will have the capacity to experience. 
In fact, you can think you can fast forward. Right now, we're limited. They're very small because we uh, the tissue engineers can't build uh, blood supply enough. The 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 and the vascularization is missing. But people are working very hard at that, and they will solve it sooner or later. And so sooner or later, you'll get to the stage where you can build that is an organoid that's not this, but that's maybe like this, a peanut butter cookie, that's a brain of a monkey. Or as I mentioned, this pizza, that's a brain of a, of a human. Or in principle, once you can build them, you can build them, to, you know, in principle, you can build them to any size. Much more like a whale, or even bigger than a whale. And so in principle, if they have, for example, electrical activity, as they do have now, and imagine the electrical activity becomes more and more similar to the electrical activity in your brain or my brain. You know, they have waves, they have 40 hertz oscillation, they have 1 over F power, you know, all the signature of an awake human brain. Well, at some point, IT would certainly say these things experience something. Now, you can ask what do they experience because they have no input and output. So... In principle, the theory would say, well, you have to unfold all the causal relationship. In this case, it may be just some simple feeling of sort of extendedness. It may be something very primitive. But it, the theory says certainly at some point, these things will feel like something. There's some work going on to actually embody these organoids in the world. So here we have something they're working on at UC San Diego, I believe. This is a little crab walking organoid robot. So how might that change the level of consciousness or intelligence here? It may be a a little higher up on the intelligence and the consciousness. Well, yeah, because access. certainly now it can it can um, it can act in the world, right? It can begin assume it has to have an input, right? Because it has to sense the world. If it can't sense the world, it just walks around blindly into its doom. So it needs to know where the predator is. It needs to know where the prey is. It needs to be able to predict, you know, to run away from the predator and to predict where the where the prey. You know, all the standard stuff that animals do. So it certainly will act intelligent, more or less so. But also now, because if you have some input and some output, it will begin, the structure of the brain will map sort of, there's this co-evolution and there's a sort of transfer of, of sort of information and matching relationship between the structures in the environment, like space or color, onto the structure of my cortex, right? Because the, the, the cortex isn't randomly wired. It's wired based on genetics, on what my species, you know, has sort of learned over the last millions of years, as well as my personal experience growing up and a baby in a particular environment, right? And so that'll be reflected there. So it probably is going to be more conscious. And this guy may now be conscious of simple things like avoid this, chase that, you know, this is good, this is bad. Warm is good, cold, too much cold or too much warm is bad. So it, it begins to have sort of some, some simple emotions. Um, it'll certainly, if it has any sort of visual input or tactile input, it'll certainly begin to form, you know, conscious experience of space and time. Now, that would be pretty impressive, but I think we've all been at least a little impressed by chat GPT and other things. Um, so where do you think we can put, let's say, GPT-4 here on this graph? Yeah, so <laughs> I would say somewhere around here. All right, and is that not conscious at all then, but very intelligent? Yes, exactly. Okay. I would say it, so what ChatGPT shows, it shows that intelligence can be achieved in very different ways. You know, we achieve it by we, I mean humans or animals in general achieve it by having evolution and then supplemented by developing brain, brain being very flexible and learning, right? I don't know anything about text and letters. That's not in my in my genome reading. But then I've, I'm born in a particular culture that has a particular alphabet and I learn to read and that greatly speeds up because now I can read about discoveries other people have made, you know, so it, it greatly speeds up. So, and co now computers, like, you know, LLMs can, can do that, but doing something radical different, right? They're like, gigantic vampires that feast on humanity's collective, you know, creativity over the last few thousand years and just suck up everything and then somehow regurgitate that in very interesting, very surprisingly adept patterns. So they're certainly intelligent. The scary thing about this, there's no limit on, on, in, on this intelligent axis. There isn't like a natural speed of light the limit, right? And if you imagine the same intelligence of a GPT, but let's say a thousand times faster, it could just outthink us. It could just run rings around us, you know, and if you think about warfare and any like that, you know, if, if they can do something a thousand times faster than human decision makers can do, then, you know, we're toast. 
Leaving that aside, however, IT says they're not conscious. Why? Is it because the brain has some supernatural spooky stuff like a soul? No, I don't think so. I'm a naturalist. But according to IT, you need to look under the hood. It's not about input-output. So IT says there's no Turing test for consciousness. There isn't a simple test you can do, like you can do a Turing test for intelligence, right? There isn't anything like that, because ultimately, of course, they can mimic us, and they're already mimicking us very well. You can ask them right now whether they're conscious. Companies put guardrails around them, right? So they're very careful to train the network. So if you ask them, they say, no, 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 I'm not conscious. I'm just an LLM, right? Because they don't want to spook us. Um, <clears throat> Now, why, why does IET think they're not conscious? Well, because you have to look under the hood at the structure of the underlying brain, if you want, and that's the, the CPU, you know, where actually, you know, the, the, the NVIDIA chip, where actually the computation happens. And that computation, um, there the structure is radical different compared to human brain. So a typical human brain, you have one node that gets, let's say, receives input from a 50 to 100,000 other nodes, and projects its output to 50, 100,000 other nodes. Furthermore, if you look at two neurons, they will have massive overlap. And so th this gives rise to vast complexity in its causal powers. CPU radical different. You have one transistor that on average is connected to two or three other transistors. It's very, this is the basis of the von Neumann architecture. This still rules totally supreme. All the cloud centers, all of that, it's, it's all von Neumann architecture. So as long as you have digital computers, they will not feel like anything. They, can, they will be able to do anything we can do, and probably better, but they won't feel like anything. Now, that's not to say that couldn't change. You could build neuromorphic computers, you know, computers in the image of the human brain. Some people are trying to do that. Or you could build quantum computers. You know, Google and other companies are trying to do that. And they are, the, the connectivity is radical different, right? Because of entanglement principle, everything is connected to everything else. So that could be much closer. The only way to test any theory of consciousness, ultimately, we have to start with us. Once we develop suitable confidence in, as you mentioned, Zap and Zip, so this is a consciousness detector, the more comfortable we get in extrapolating the theory to extreme cases like cerebral organoids and LLMs. But we need a theory. Subscribe to I'm Curious for more clips and watch the full interview on Patreon. Thanks for watching.